Welcome to another Guide You Outdoors video. This is the third in a series of four about the 100 mile wilderness. We did an unboxing video with Mountain Smith. We did a shakedown hike. This video, we're gonna fix the things that didn't work for us on that shakedown hike. We're gonna prep food, uh, make some of our own gear, and just dial all our gear before we head into the 100 mile wilderness. Pot cozies are a simple thing you can make on your own and a great addition to your camp kitchen. Uh, I really like them because you can hold the pot after it comes off the stove and not worry about burns, but also it will keep cooking items like rice and you can conserve fuel by it. Uh, this cup is actually too hot to even touch or drink out of, so I'm going to make one for this. And all you need is some piping insulation, the metallic tape, scissors, and a magic marker. The outside edges of this thing kind of have a nice fold already pre-bent, so I like to hang that off so I can fold it over and enclose the lid. So I'm not going to take that into my measurement. So rolling this all the way to get a nice piece. There's my mark, and then just follow the pen, roll my edge. Here we go. We're gonna need a top to go over this. And a bottom to go on this. So there we go, that's that easy. Just making a template and then cutting out these pieces and taping them together around the pot. I've got a top and a bottom and my side. So I want an option to have these out. So I'm just gonna cut slits on the other side. nice when you're taping it to put the thing you're wrapping in it and you can make sure you get nice tape seams and on these square pieces I cut a little slit since we're dealing with a round surface. So there we go, two pot cozies made very simply in a quick time um, but a great addition to your cook kit. On our shakedown hike I stood in a stream and water immediately entered the boot and I found a seam had burst here, opened up, and the water was just running directly into the boot. So I've taken a leather awl and thrown a couple stitches in there. The leather awl is pretty simple to use. You pass this sturdy needle through the leather, create a little loop on the other side, on the inside, and run a string that you've pulled through, through the loop, passing it back and forth, and just sewing this together. So. Now I want to put some snow seal on these and make sure this seam is waterproof so I might as well do redo the whole boot. But first I've got to get all this crud off here and make sure they're nice and clean. So now using my heating source you can use a hair dryer, put them in front of the heater, a heat gun, blow torch, whatever. Just be careful, don't overheat them. Um, just want to get it hot enough to <clears throat> melt this wax in, which I'll apply with a small rag. Don't be afraid to just glob it on there, and you can just rub all the excess off. But make sure you get in all the crevices, all the seams, all the stitching. Get all down in the tongue. Make sure you loosen the laces or take them off so you can get all in those spaces between. One thing I do at the beginning of each season is get out my waterproof layers and hit them with TX Direct Spray On. And it's a Nick Wax product, real simple to put on. All you need to do is hold it a bit away and just drench it. If there's any extra, you just wipe it down. 
that give it a good coating. You can hit your tent rain fly with this. Uh, rain pants, you know, I hit my ski jacket and ski pants with it every year. This is a way to get more life out of your jacket. Food can be a really tricky topic because if you don't have enough food, you're miserable and you don't have the calories to hike. If you have too much food, you're gonna burn out your knees in the mountains and injure yourself, making you unable to hike. So we have to find a delicate balance in between the two. There's things to think about like ratios, what you normally eat in the real world um, is gonna be very different than your cravings on the trail because you're burning about 10,000 calories a day from just hiking all day and there's no way you can eat 10,000 calories in a day and carry it all on your back. So there's really a lot to think about. Dial it in. For me, I find that I like to eat throughout the day, so I go big on the snacks, late on the lunch, late on the breakfast. But it's about finding what works for you. That's why we did the shakedown hike, kind of see where we're at as far as food. One easy snack to make at your home is fruit leather. All you need is applesauce, parchment paper, and a dehydrator. Cut the paper to fit your trays and smooth a thin layer of applesauce on each tray. After a few hours, it should peel right off. Andrea also made her own vegan jerky. She found the recipe at veganblueberry.com backslash vegan dash jerky. She used both tempeh and seitan, finding the seitan absorbed the marinade better and had a better texture where the tempeh kind of just crumbled in pieces. Here's breakfast. We've got some granola handmade by Andrea. My guilty pleasure on trail is some sugary cereal, so I picked some out for myself. We've got dehydrated milk, coffee, yerba mate, brown sugar, and Andrea is gonna bring a tea ball and I'm bringing a coffee drip press. Let's check out lunch. We made some fruit leather by dehydrating applesauce, so we have a bunch of that. Um, we've got a salty trail mix, and then the much debated gorp. There was things poured out, there was gorp put back in, there was craisins hand-picked and put back in, much debated gorp. Um, we think this is what we'll use. I find on the uphills I need to just be snacking, so I have a lot more bars than Andrea about two per day, a little more. And then uh, she's vegetarian, but I have a bunch of jerky. So Primal Urge Foods is a subscription service to jerky. They sent me a couple of these and it's a cool little package, just pops open. And then you've got a bunch of different jerky in it. So I'm bringing one of these kits with me in there. They're all, all different meats, all different flavors. Seems pretty cool if you like jerky. Um, check them out, primalurgefoods.com. Andrea, being a vegetarian, made some of her own um, jerky using seitan and tempeh, and then she brought some banana chips, and you can see her snackity bag is a lot less thick than mine, but she plans on eating more gorp than I. There, I said it on camera. If I am begging for a gorp on day four, that's on me. Let's check out dinners. Here's our dinner layout. It's all vegetarian. We've got a uh, pad thai noodles with some sauce. We've got lentils with a curry paste. We have rice and beans, which we will steal a tort and cheese from our lunch bag. We've got some pasta fazool, beets and spinach, quinoa and pesto mac and cheese the staple of course and then some instant mashed potatoes if we need to stretch a meal or we put too much water in that thickens it up and some just veggies we'll probably add that to the lentils and the quinoa to stretch those um, and then i've got an apple almond crisp alpine air from 1989 30 years ago Yes, we're gonna eat this in the 100 Mile Wilderness um, to show you the shelf life of these. It's pretty amazing. So it'll be an uh, awesome experience or it won't. And of course, some hot sauce. We'll put this in a smaller bottle, but essential to have some spice you can throw on there. So that's dinner. 
Some other essentials I almost forgot in the fridge. Make sure you don't forget that bag. Go in and out the cheese, you're gonna have a bad time. This is Vermont Sharp, extra sharp, and some pepperoni for me. Here's our cook kit. We've got an Evernew 1.3 liter titanium pot, no coating, GSI cups for drinking and divvying up dinner, and Alpha Light cutlery. Uh, two canisters, one smaller. Um, we will probably cook over the fire some nights, so I imagine we won't use this, but just in case. And then a cheap stove I bought for six dollars uh, in Ladakh, India. It hasn't let me down yet. Of course, the igniter is gone, but that's what lighters are for. So, gone to the canister stove, no alcohol stove this time. Pretty simple cook kit. And of course we have Summit's food, so I'll be carrying three days of his food just in case he goes a wandered and comes back without his pack on. And I've got the canine pack by Mountain Smith loaded up, balance each side saddle. I've got a food bowl in this side with food, and on this side, uh, the other half of his food. And in this little extra pocket, I've got a tick key and some Musher's Secret. And this is a great product to protect his paws. Mountain Smith sent along one more package and in it was this. This is called the Clippa. If you've seen any of my videos, I'm always wearing my camera bag right here on the chest strap. And this bag doesn't just have one loop um, or two. My other one was the stitching was falling out because it, it kind of jostles on there. This goes all the way through and it's got this nice padding. So if it is moving around, it's not uncomfortable. What I like about this is it's thin, so it's not sticking out where you can't see your feet, um, but it's also wide, so you can fit a DSL camera in there and another lens, or I'm probably gonna put my GoPro in this pocket here. But there's plenty of room. There's uh, another pocket here, pocket here, and then two side stuffs here. One of the coolest features is underneath. Check this out. Always hard to find. This is a rain cover. Usually when it rains, I just put the camera in a dry bag in my backpack and stop shooting. Um, so now I can pull it out for the occasional video and photo in light rain. Uh, I still have a dry bag just in case it gets torrential rain um, that I store in the side pocket to then ditch it in my bag. So cool feature, you're never gonna find a uh, rain cover this size. This one's built in. You can take it off as well, but it stuffs right in there. Very cool. So, uh, this hasn't hit the market yet. This is just a concept, but stay tuned for it. They sent me this one with a return label, and I can't wait to get my hands on one. I've got to ship this one back because it's the only one that exists. So I'm told. So thank you, Mountain Smith, for letting me try it out. Um, let's take a look at some other gear. On the shakedown hike, Andrea ended up being cold in her sleeping bag. So I fixed that by getting Nemo's Tango Duo. It's a double quilt. It has an under quilt as well that you can kind of strap in. Um, and then a hood attachment that you can strap in and pull over to really oven yourselves in and get a lot of heat. It's only rated at 30 degrees, but with the two of us in it and Summit, that's gonna be nice toasty oven. Um, we'll just pull it around the sides and tuck it in. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's also, I believe, under three pounds. So, you know, our bags reach about two plus pounds. So we've lost a little weight there. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and stay tuned for our next video on Maine's 100 Mile Wilderness.